lease cycle was too long, so I think we should have a shorter lease cycle. Um, I, I, don't, I don't have the answer right now. Um, I'm happy to talk about it more this week. So, every, every model has its own challenges. I think I've seen projects with fixed release cycles and you know, their ability to do massive architectural improvements is limited because they need to do everything in a relatively short time frame. Um, at the same time, I've also seen projects that manage it well, so I think, um, I think we need to manage our releases better. Um, and I think that's a topic that we need to talk about, uh, what the right implementation is to manage those releases better. You know, let's have that discussion this week. Here's another one. Someone is wondering where Greece sees himself and Aquia in 2020. Um, well, I hope I can, you know, still continue. Well, for my personally, I hope I can continue to, <laughs> to be a part of Drupal, um, that I can continue to contribute like all of you guys. Um, I don't, I have no intention of stopping. Um, a lot of time people ask me, did you ever get tired of Drupal? And I can honestly say that I've not had a single day in my life that I felt like today is too much. So I you know, basically love what I do. Um, as for Acquia, I mean, I think I, my hope is to make Acquia a successful company and to you know, make it a bigger company than, it, than what it is today, but to have it be you know, part of the Drupal community have it be part of the ecosystem and you know be an active contributor and help improve Drupal and all of the things that we try to do today. So I don't I don't foresee any big big changes there. Okay. So here's another here's another one. In 2020 will Drupal be OO? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it will be I I think it will be a lot more OO, if not entirely. We'll see, but that's definitely the uh, direction that we're heading in right now. So I'm inclined to say yes, but ultimately it's it's up to the community. So, so um, once Drupal is no longer primarily for developers, it's in quotes, um, who will develop for Drupal then? Sorry, say that again. Once who? once Drupal is no longer primarily for developers, who will develop for Drupal? Who will develop sites with Drupal? Yes, or? who will be the, the people working on, on oh, Drupal itself? Yes, I think no, so. will be the same of us, right? <laughs> Hopefully, it will be the same people. There's always going to be people working on Drupal, I hope. Um, yeah, I don't, yeah, I think people will continue to work on Drupal. I'll continue to work on Drupal, and I know at least you know, more than a dozen people in the room that I think will continue to work on Drupal as well. So, <laughs> you better. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of questions that were all about people not being sure. So, if this, this growth is so big, what do we do for people? Like, uh, we, we need to, to have more developers. One of the questions is uh, could it lead to bad Drupal sites and then does give Drupal a bad name because bad stuff is, is done? How can, we, how can we avoid that? Right, yeah, so I think there's, you know, growing is definitely not easy. <laughs> It's always painful, and there's going to be bad sites. There's going to be bad Drupal developers. I think I, you know, I spoke to that in my slides a little bit. Um, you know how to avoid it. It's. I don't think there's a single solution. I think you know making Drupal so that it's much more difficult to make mistakes. You know solving the problem with technology, if you will, um, is one way to address some of the the challenges. Just like we have a database abstraction layer, if you use it properly, you know your site shouldn't be vulnerable for you know, SQL injection attacks. Is there more things along those lines that we can do to prevent bad things to be written in the first place? Um, and then, of course, that won't stop all of the problems. Some of the issues are social problems, and it's hard to solve all the social problems with technology. Would, would have, you know, if that was possible, engineers would you know, rule the world. <laughs> but that's not the case. Um, and so the social problems I think we address um, you know, by being responsible people, by telling people what the right, you know, telling people about the right way of, of doing things. Um, you know, certifications, again, it's sort of the ugly word, but that helps to some extent, um, sometimes. 
So I think it's a number of different things that we apply to help sort of raise the bar and to, to prevent some of those things from happening. So. I don't have any more questions that came in through Twitter. Um, any like quick questions that I can hear from down here? Anyone? Yes. Yes. Um, was um, the optimization that Dries talked about on, on testing modules, testing performance on modules, uh, but will there be a, a human counterpart to that? So we, you mean some kind of committee that looks at modules? Is that? No, 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 no all of us. Not committee, but just... Human. All of us. Okay, so can we make some kind of mechanism that, that enables us to uh, review modules and maybe uh, recommend them? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's part of the redesign. Um, to have some ratings on projects and so, so I think it's it's a good idea. Of course, it's you know subject to gaming, <laughs> like all other systems. But I, I think the solution is a combination of automated things. I'm a big believer of trying to automate what you can automate and not to rely on human effort, because you know we're only so many people and there's you know a hundred times more work for all of us to do. Um, so you know, if we can automate things in a re reliable and precise way, I think we should. But of course, not every solution can be engineered away. So I definitely think there's room for manual work, like reviews and ratings and all of those things as well. And I think a good example is the usage statistics. On um, the you know, we basically report how many actual sites use a module. I think it's a good example of something that we can do fully automated, almost, except for maintaining the, the servers. Um, but it's a good example of a, you know, something that we can do which scales really well because you know, modules are being added, we automatically track their usage, it gives end users a good idea of how many people actually use a module. It's, it's a metric that represents um, the maturity and the quality of a module, all of those things. But again, I think we'll need both. It's a good question to ask uh, Rasmus tomorrow. <laughs> uh, as far as I'm concerned, I will. But, you know.